the greatest podcast currently produced in IAEA that is about spearfishing, guaranteed. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about Moo. Then we got Joe Fracini, host of uh, Spear Divers TV, going to show us how to fillet a fish on our catch of the day segment. And uh, we'll have a new feature that we're going to have every podcast about free diving. Um, I'm embarking sort of on a little undertaking some training. I want to try to dive 300 feet, which is kind of a lofty goal because my current best is 220. Um, I'll give myself a couple months and document it with this podcast along the way. Also, uh, I'm going to try to get these podcasts coming out, rolling a little bit more often. So uh, subscribe on iTunes or through the RSS feed. Not wild about putting them up on YouTube all the time, although the next few ones I'll continue to do that. Anyway, uh, let's talk about some Moo. If you're not familiar with the Moo, it's this guy right here. It's a pretty popular fish to hunt. It's definitely a big challenge, and the reward is good too. It's a really tasty fish. Uh, what they like to do is just kind of hover around in a little school. Uh, they like to hang out near sand pockets and, and especially if they have caves nearby they're known for being pretty smart um, but really they're actually a pretty curious fish it's just that their curiosity is satisfied pretty easy I guess it's just because they have such good vision or they're not necessarily as bold as something like a goat or an uhu but if you hide they'll definitely come try to check you out and that's probably a better method than just staying down for a long, long time, which is what most people think you have to do. In fact, I've gotten inside a cave where I'm hidden real well on the east side, and I've had moves come in so close I've shot them with a 85-centimeter gun, um, which doesn't have a whole lot of range. So you can see here my favorite technique is just to get far back in a cave if you can and then dust up some sand to really obscure the view of you even better and that usually works and we will come right in again you just get in the dark dust the sand the moo wants to come check you out and next step sometimes sometimes you still do have to take kind of a long shot um, try to pick one with that blue under his eyes you know that's a big one every now and then they're out in the open but you still have to make a good shot. Alright, in case you don't know how to fillet a fish, Joe is going to put on a little display here with a mutton snapper he caught. Uh, he starts, you can see, by slicing back behind the head and then along the spine on the lower part. And then on the dorsal part, he follows the spine again. Uh, you want to get a good sharp knife. Uh, I'm not really an expert on knives, but uh, anything with a Japanese name is usually pretty good. Um, right there, he's just kind of feeling with the knife uh, along the ribs. You don't want to cut through the ribs. You kind of want to sc almost scrape above them. Um, and then there are some bones perpendicular to the spine that you just cut through. Um, you can see it's easy to just cut the meat right off the skin and right here you can that's he's cutting those intramuscular bones. Um, I think they're also called like neopleural bones the ones that are perpendicular to the ribs. Now you just flip it over and repeat on the other side. Bonus points if you can do it as fast as Joe is doing it here. I wonder how he cooked this one. I know he steams these sometimes. I know he fries them. Um, we'll have to have him on for the next episode. See how to cook it up. So we're starting by measuring our lung volumes. All you need is a big plastic container, a small one, and a tube. Calibrate that smaller container by dumping a liter, maybe even just half a liter of water into it at a time, and then mark off on each side uh, that measurement. 
Uh, what you're going to end up doing is turning the small container upside down in the big one and breathing into it through the tube, um, catching the capacity of your lungs. Uh, there's more about this on the website, thekindproductions.com. If you follow the articles tab, you might be surprised that lung volume actually isn't all that important to free diving. Um, you can still dive pretty well without huge lungs, but Mike and I are going to do a little bit of training and we wanted to see how it would affect our lung capacities. Um, we tested them with and without packing. Got quite a bit more with packing, but uh, be careful about that. It, it can uh, You can get hurt doing that. An even simpler method for getting your lung volume is just to take a balloon, blow it up, measure their circumference, and then uh, calculate the volume from there. So I'll just try to get a couple circumferences and we'll take the average. So really that's a measurement of your vital capacity, which is different than your total lung capacity. Um, we kind of sped through all that, but that's because the podcast was running a little longer than I really wanted. Um, and you can just go to the kindproductions.com webpage and read all about it. Um, please do that and uh, play along at home.